Sam. Hey, how you doing? Peebo Bryson. Thank you so much for calling into the podcast. Man, this is awesome. Oh, my pleasure, man. Anytime. Man, I you are coming here. You're going to be here tomorrow at the soundboard at the Motor City Hotel and Casino. Man, I can't sure. wait to see you. Um <laughs> I've seen you so many times before. Actually, you've been traveling extensively. How is it um, right now? How's the reception being on the road? Um, you know, just I just got back from the Orient, you know, and I'm just trying to get get past that fourteen hour time difference. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I understand. I understand. One of the things I'm looking forward to, much like a lot of um, the audience here, looking for your new project. You just had the um, Stand for Love, that project. How's that reaction been? Oh, it's been extraordinary. Um, I, I guess I'm, Sam, I'm, I guess I'm an, uh, an anomaly. I'm not supposed to exist. <laughs> but I do. And, and You know, it's I think working with Terry and Jimmy has really, um, really helped a great deal in terms of just um, making making the music more more current, um, more in tune with what's happening today, without destroying what it's taken me a lifetime to achieve. It's kind of a an odd dichotomy to have, but it's one that I have, and it's it's working. I mean, you don't know that you can make great music, but you don't know whether people are going to embrace it or not. You know, and and the fact that everybody's embraced this so well is uh, is 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 a great blessing. One of the things I want to talk about, I have listened to it myself, and mm -hmm. um, I want to say, man, you got at least 20 albums to your credit, but this album seemed different. It was more more personal, if that makes sense. You know what? I, you know, I think I think so too because it's. Uh, I think it's got to do with the times that we're in. If I'm honest, you know, it's like uh, standing for love is is a is a cool thing to stand for these days. I mean, it's uh, you you would think that <laughs> it w it would be something that people would easily understand in, in terms of the concept, and it is. I mean, people embrace it in that way because it is personal. It's uh, it's about all kinds of love. I mean, if you think about it. Let's think about uh, the, our society today we, the, that we live in. I mean, in the last ten years, what is what's become of relationships? If you, if you think about it, they've been downgraded in the last ten, 10 years. Ten years ago, they were downgraded from relationship to hookups, which is tantamount to uh, uh, an actor going to an audition. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what cool. a relationship is, right? So now they've been downgraded once again. Uh, it's, it's not a. It's, it's not even a hookup now. A relationship is how well you navigate Tinder. <laughs> That's real. You you right. Yeah, I'm just saying. So what you got now is you have a situation where actually our phones are having the relationships. Mm -hmm. we, we're not even having the relationships. We're taking the human side of it out out of it. And you can't do that because at the end of the day, we're still human beings. And we're going to still need the same thing. You're not going to always be 18. You're not going to always be 25. You're not going to always be 30. You're not going to always be 35. You're not going to be, at the end of the day, you're going to need to know how to navigate a real relationship with a real human being. And, and if you don't have, you won't have any skills in it. They won't have any skills because that's not what relationship is today. So what, are the, the, I, what happens is probably the divorce rate probably quadruples. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, probably, you know, probably quadruples at, at that point, you know. So you, you got to look at it like that. I mean, this is important music with an important message at this particular point, a reminder, as you will. That's what Stand for Love is, a reminder that we're still human beings at the end of the day. And you better learn how to get it right. Every relationship is not tragic. <laughs> so yeah. Some of us actually got to get it right. <laughs> hey, you've been getting it right. You know what? I can't recommend this album more with that. I was going to say something, but you pretty much topped anything I could have said about it. I encourage <laughs> anyone who's familiar with your music, but let's talk about this. I, I, got, I got to. I'm talking to a oh, legend. Come on. 
uh, like, let's really break this down. You got over 40 years in the music business. You have generations of fans. Who are we kidding? I have heard your music at every gathering of people I could think of. Fish fries, cookouts, graduations, <laughs> weddings, whatever. Like I gotta know, man. Do people reach out to you, and does it have an effect when? Because you're kind of a part in someone's special occasion. Well, here's the thing. I mean, if 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 I'm doing something just everyday stuff, like at the driving range with my wife or something, we're hitting golf balls or something, and a guy passes by with a wife and about four point two kids in tow, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you may be responsible like for some of those kids. Well, they go, they go down and they start hitting their balls, and then they come back about 10 minutes later and say, people, right? And I said, yes, sir. And he goes, and the, he lines the kids up and the wife, he goes, this one was made on Field of Fire, and this one was made on <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to tell you something, that's better than a than a Grammy you know, or you know, or the Oscar or anything like that. And the wife is standing there, she's smiling, going, yep, that's right, that's the one it was made on. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's... it's it's life, and, and to be that uh, part of, of that part of life of somebody's personal life, please, that's the best thing in the world. All right, must the best thing in the world. Like I gotta say, I have a special part with you, in you know, now I want to say, granted, um, uh, you, I'm a little younger, but here's how I remember you, I, and I just, I, okay. I remember you because of your work with Disney. Growing up, <laughs> I'm serious. Growing up, listen. Let me tell you something. You know what, Sam? Because in Beauty and the Beast and the whole the world, they take you back to your happy place, mate. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yes. That's what it takes you. Uh, you remember when that when life was good, man? It wasn't, was was life any better? <laughs> Not then. I mean, those were real talk songs about love, but just in the cartoon. Like I could take those, I could take those songs, take them out of those cartoon elements, and just play it in my radio like anybody else, and it Correct. still have the same feeling. Here's the thing, you know why? Because what you have to read Marcus Aurelius. What is a thing in and of itself? What does it do? What is its nature? If what is beauty to be? It's it's an abject lesson to children around the world to to look past the physical to find true beauty. Is there there's a better lesson to be learned than you, you tell me what it is. And what is a whole new world? It's every hope and every promise that will ever be, that anybody will ever have, any child will ever have, any adult will ever have. It's the best we aspire to. That's real. There are two better if it's there there are two better lessons and two better inspirations in life then you need to tell me what those are that's right that's right you also had an effect on me personally now i'm, I'm going personally because I, I i gotta let my fanboy show out just a little bit like that's me as a kid but growing up and you probably get this but you used to do the time life the body and soul in a in a commercial <laughs> i know that because i used to have a night job i used to be a night dj so what we'd do, we had a TV playing, but on mute. But I'm seeing you. I, I always want to ask this question. How did you not just say, break out, feel the fire? All right, just listen to this. How did you not push your old stuff? <laughs> because that was not the job. <laughs> you was thinking it, though. Yeah, I saw the look I on your face. I was thinking it. I was thinking it. I was thinking it. I'm not going to lie. Listen, man, you know, I'm the same things that I started out believing in. Uh, and, I, and the only reason I did the time my thing was because I believed in that music. And I, I, I sold it because the music really sold itself. It, it was worth somebody talking about. Um, that's why I did so well. And that's why it's doing well again. <laughs> you know, uh, it's because they recycle those things from time to time, especially the ones that were successful. Um, uh, it's a it's a big thing to to represent good music. I'm 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 going to 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 London to do the Palladium with a twenty five piece orchestra uh, in this month at the end of the month uh, mm -hmm. to do a, a, a Barry White tribute. <laughs> I mean, you know, I I haven't played the London Palladium, so I'm, I want to play it. You know, I want to do it, and it's worth doing it because Barry's work was so important, especially to that particular culture.
you know, it's where they still revere him in a way it's because Europeans revere black music the way we used to. <laughs> That's what, hey. We used, the way we used to revere it. You right. <laughs> But they still do, you know, so that that's this music is important to them. And me doing it is important to them. I get to do my stuff too, but it's it's really about that, you know, and, and I can't think of anything that's more honorable to, to do. I, I hope that somebody like me will do what I'm doing for him at that at, at some point in my life when uh, or some point in life when my time is done and I'm 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 done doing whatever it is that I do. When my time on this good earth is up. You know, because here's the thing. I'm, I'm, I look at my, I'm, I'm peeking into, into, into one of this car right now and looking at my little boy. He's making faces at me. He's 10 months old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and let me tell you something. It makes me want to live another 100 years. <laughs> well, Just looking at his face, you know, I mean, he is the, the best thing. The two best things that have happened to people of Rice and is the, meeting Jimmy and Terry and finally getting to work with them. And creating this wonderful project called Stand for Love, and this little boy, it's ten months, and he took his first steps yesterday. Man, that's beautiful. Like when you sit down and you talk about marriage, you talk about fatherhood. Sure. Um, I gotta know. Uh, he's probably 10 months. He probably doesn't understand it yet, or maybe he does. Does he know when he look over and see his dad? My dad's Peebo Bryson. Does he kind of connect the dots? Or can, do your kids <laughs> listen to the music? And a little bit. He, he, a little bit because he goes to work. He's gone to work with me several times now. He, he knows what that is. He knows what daddy does. He doesn't know. He doesn't know why people like it so much. <laughs> 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 he knows he knows what I do, and that's that's interesting because I mean I sang to him before he he was actually he actually came into the world he was there but you know he was just on the other side of the, of the tummy. I sang to him a lot every day, every night, so he knows what it is. And I can't try to I'm figuring out what his voice is like now. I mean I can't tell whether he's trying to be me or James Ingram because he's got this high pitched. <laughs> Uh, you brought up James Ingram, but like you, you work with a lot of people. Roberta Flack, yes. uh, Regina sure. Bell, who's going to be with you in Detroit as well. I Celine love Dion. I love working with her. She is awesome. The list goes on and on. Is there? And you just talked about Jimmy and Terry. Is there anybody else left on the list that you would love to work with? You know what? <laughs> There's only there's I want to work with Sade, sadly. Oh, that'd be great. You know, she doesn't know that I I wrote this song 20 years ago. I mean, called Looking for Sade, and who ain't? You know, <laughs> we, yeah. To be honest with us, <laughs> we're all looking for it. And I, I think that's because she represents that which is mysterious and sexy that's in every woman. So, so to me, every woman is Sade. <laughs> okay, you know, that's the way I see it. You know, uh, so. She's like one of three people I don't know. <laughs> Give it time. And, Give it time. That happens. She doesn't know. She doesn't know this song is about her. So it's been. It's it's uh, just been released uh, on the jazz charts, uh, and and I had the, the pleasure of, uh, of of doing that particular cut with Bonnie James. It was great. I mean, you know, maybe she hears it, she'll she'll just consent to sing that uh, that second verse, which was written for her. <laughs> Oh well, there you go. You know, hey, I, I'm still, I'm keeping on the line. All right, I got two more questions. I'll let you go. Go on, then. All right, first question, I, I have to ask this. I mean, we'll, we'll put a time stamp on it. We talking about young you. We talking about okay. Peebo just starting out. Peebo, right. you you have been out there. You have been Peebo Bryson all your life, a legend. Sure. You've been world renowned. You just told me you're going to London. Yep. Where on this big planet that we stay in that you can say objectively, put a timestamp on it. I ain't trying to cause nothing at home. Where there was the baddest women where you you can't go right now. You can't go there anymore right now. But if you had to just point to somewhere on the map, where would you say? It, it depends on what you're looking for in a woman. If you're looking for just aesthetics, then you know there 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 are places for that. But that's that doesn't hold enough substance for me. I mean, 
pretty is, it's pretty does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, for me. So I, I like, I like European women. I like actually like UK women. That's why I married one because okay. of the the lack of drama and the, the not going to bed angry thing. The no mad bed or the the lack of confrontation and all that kind of stuff. So for the last. 12 years I haven't had any stress in my relationship because uh, the civility is the, is, is, is the height of every single day you know to be civil to one, to one another to be excellent to one another is is everything and to resolve all the issues before they become painful or they fester so that's uh, that kind of relationship is really really attractive to me so that that attracts me to uk women in general because uh my wife tried to convince me that there was a group she had a group of friends like her and i, I wasn't buying that one so that yeah i and it turns out that she was absolutely correct that it's a it's a it's a different kind of kind of approach to a relationship i mean where you resolve your your your, your most not just your basic issues, but uh, your most intimate issues and the most excruciating, uh, hurtful uh, 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 issues in uh, just through dialogue. I mean, just honest and open dialogue, and it's without drama and too much, too much hurt and too many tears. I like that. That's awesome. And the last one, you know, I, I like that, and I like the whole, you know. I, I'm, a, I'm a good woman to you. Be a good man to me. That's, I mean, uh, how many times did we to say it? Take me to heart and I'll always love you. No greater wisdom than that right there, man. About it now? I got one last question I have to ask. There are people who are listening who just trying to get a piece of what you've done. You've done this for over 40 years. What advice mm -hmm. would you give to any young artist starting out, somebody who just want to even see a piece of what you've done? What advice would yep. you give them? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that there's, there's an addendum to my, my what I said about women. I love all women everywhere. That's the first thing you need to understand about me. And I love women. I'm a man who loves women, period. And I think that every woman in every physical place in the world has, a, every society in the world has something that's unique to them. And, and comparing one to the other is really like comparing apples to oranges because it's all fruit in the, in the, in the end. Um, I think every woman is still every woman. It's you know I don't care. It doesn't. I don't think it really matters where you come from. I I think in terms of your tendencies, uh, the way you see things and how you approach things, that might be different, but nothing else changes. I mean, it's it's all the same passion, all the same fruit, mm -hmm. just dealt with differently. And as far as new artists are concerned, I would encourage them to. Be as musical as you, as you can possibly be. Learn how to play something. Learn how to be self-sufficient as in as many ways as you possibly can, and never, ever, ever try to be anyone, anybody else, anyone other than who you are and what you hope to be and what you hope to achieve as you, not somebody else. Finding your the the thing that's that's missing in to, today's music is individuality and, and good taste. I mean. As simple as that. We're we're we become a nation of followers and not creators. That's awesome. Pebo, you're going to be at the soundboard at the Motor City Casino. Man, I want as many people as they can to listen to the new project. You mind if we play a couple cuts after this interview? You know, please, uh, you know, please play as many cuts as you... And We'll let look at the Sade cut out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, who knows? It may work. Uh, it could work. You know, hey, Tony Sade cut out with Bonnie James on it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, and, and listen, I stand for love. I mean, and every once in a while, you got to do something that, like, stand for love itself is is something that's and it's it's as close to hip hop as I'm gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's and, and the new single all she wants to do is me is is a step is delight. And, and I love the first single still to this day and that is a love like yours and mine is it's you 
can play those for me anytime, Sam. Man. Anytime, man. Peebo, thank you so much. Can't wait to see you when you touch down here in Detroit. I'll talk you to know, you soon. Man, you, you come, come, come face to face with me now. All right, then. Hey, brother. I'll see you there. All right. You have a good one. Thanks a lot. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.